In this week's Civil Beat segment, we're putting a human face on Hawaii's problem, homeless problem. It's not just a sea of tents out there. There are some people who are looking for help, and they are really struggling. Anita Hofschneider is joining us tonight. And Anita, you focused on a woman named Ingrid Rodriguez. And tell us about, in a nutshell, what went wrong for her. Well, Ingrid, Ingrid Rodriguez um, is a woman who worked and paid taxes in Hawaii for over 30 years. But at age 59, about three years ago, she was laid off from her job in Waikiki, and she couldn't find another one. And when she became homeless, she went to the Institute for Human Services to find a place to stay. But she says she was told that she had to lay down on the mat and get back up again on her own in order to stay there. That's something she can't do because of her severe arthritis. Mm, and so they call that a mattress test of sorts. And because of that mattress test, she couldn't find anywhere to go. So what ended up happening to her? Well, she ended up sleeping in her car for 11 months, and it was very difficult, and her health deteriorated. But luckily, she eventually found housing, and now she has an apartment in Wahiawa. But the whole experience left her very scarred. Well, I, I think it's pretty shocking to a lot of people. Here's a woman who had a job, had an apartment. Um, somehow, there was no safety net for her. She did end up suing. Well, she actually brought a complaint before the Civil Rights Commission, you know, contending that IHS should change their policies. And after two years, um, IHS has settled. They don't claim responsibility in the, ca in the case, but they do promise to send four of their staff members to training in fair housing law. Now, what can we learn from what happened to here? Did IHS fail a requirement? What could she have done differently to prevent having to live in her car? Well, IHS says that um, they, they basically deny having had a mattress test at the time that uh, Rodrigues called. And so they, they aren't accepting responsibility through the settlement. But it is a good lesson for homeless shelters to realize that they are, that the, the Fair Housing Act does apply to them and they do have to make a reasonable accommodations for physically disabled people who make up about a fourth of Hawaii's homeless population. Mm -hmm. Overall, what's the takeaway from your piece tonight? Uh, well, I think the takeaway is that policymakers, um, advocates say, should consider providing more funding for the disabled homeless people. I spoke with one person who worked at the Lighthouse Outreach Center who said they only get $13 per person per night, which isn't enough to help people who are severely physically disabled. Wow. It is a really compelling story. Thank you so much for bringing it to us. If you'd like to take a look at it, it is on civilbeat.com. Quite a compelling piece. Anita, thank you so much for joining us.